All right, hey, PV High School, uh, it's good to have you on another Monday. Um, it's like week 59 or something like that of the quarantine. I don't know what it is, but um, we're continuing our daily devos and thought we'd do something a little different this week. And so I've got I've got Zach over here. Zach Boyer is with us. So um, he's hey, like, had his last he's had his last day of high school ever because uh, um, he won't be going back to high school, thankfully. Um, but uh, he's here with us this morning. And so um, if you've been following along with this, we're in um, New Morning Mercies, um, April 20th. And um, <clears throat> Zach will kind of um, kind of ask you a couple of questions. So when you think about um, the theme of what we're talking about today, what what kind of is our theme for today? Um, it's about kind of not living for yourself, um, even after you've accepted uh, God's grace, like um, how that doesn't clear you to just continue living for yourself that you have to start living for him. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think we're in Romans six, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. um, one through 14. <clears throat> yeah. Romans six. Once you read that for us and then we'll kind of walk through everything. All right. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that no, or so that grace may increase by no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like, the, like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For, sh for sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. Yeah, there's so much there we could, we could spend, you know, a long time unpacking everything that that, that passage says, but Paul starts it off with like this rhetorical question, because there were a lot of, there was a lot of thinking of, well, hey, if, if, uh, if grace is never going to run out, and God's going to give it to us all the time, then can't we just go ahead and, and sin and not worry about sinning, because God's grace is going to cover it. And then he, in the most emphatic way that he could say, says no. And then he goes on to explain himself a little bit. So there's really kind of this, this tension between grace and freedom that we see here in that. So what were some thoughts that you had on that? Um, well, one of the things that really stuck out to me when I read it um, that the author said was, the purpose of God's grace is not to make your little kingdom of one work better. The purpose of God's grace is to free you from your slavery so that you can live for a much, much better kingdom. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that really stuck out to me. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, it, it's really easy right now to think um, we are um, about all of our misery, about being shut in and not able to go do the things that we want to do. And yet mm -hmm. there's something bigger at work here. And that's maybe in a small microcosm. I think what what Paul Tripp is saying is <clears throat> um, God's grace invites you in, to live a, a better story, a bigger story of what that is. So, anything else that you that, that um, kind of came up to uh, came to mind for you? Um, yeah, there was one other quote that he said that stuck out to me. That was. Um, Humble admission of need and humble submission to God open me up to the freest of lives. Because that kind of doesn't make sense, like, in my head when I'm thinking about it. Like, how can submission to something open me up to freedom? Um, but kind of what Paul is talking about in this passage, like. Yeah. 
Christ is freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, um, I've read that quote too, and it reminded me, I, I use this illustration a lot. Like if we, if we were going to get, you know, 20 guys together and uh, give them a football and take them out to PV out on all the big soccer fields and everything, and said, all right, you guys go play football. I mean, you're going you're gonna to divide into teams. You're going to determine who's the quarterback, all that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. if you don't have the boundaries for the game, if you don't submit to what the boundaries are for the game and where the end zone is, it's going to be pretty frustrating because somebody's going to say, no, you're out of bounds. No, that's not out of bounds. Or I scored. No, you didn't score. That's not where the goal line is. But if everybody agrees on what the boundaries are and submits to them, it allows you to enjoy the game of football the way it was meant to be enjoyed. And I think there's something similar mm-hmm. there to life. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, Cause I mean, I, this is something I've struggled with a lot personally, like, okay, I'm saved. So doesn't that mean I can just keep doing what I want and then he'll forgive me. Um, but you know, in doing that, that's kind of uh, like blasphemy right there just to yeah. like, well, I'm, I'm abusing his grace. Basically that's what it was. And so, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I think I think it was uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer said this about about that. He said, "Grace that is expected," which is kind of what you're talking about there. Like, well, he's going to forgive me. Grace mm-hmm. that expected is no longer grace anymore, because that's the whole definition of grace is something that's not expected and, and freely given. And if mm-hmm. you expect it and know that it's going to be given, that's not grace anymore. That's law. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's one of those things where. We have to hold in tension the idea that God does want us to live in freedom, but freedom from what? If he wants to be free from sin, that also means we're chained to something else. Because before we were chained to sin, but he made us, but he released us from that so that we can be free to live the life that he's called us to. So freedom doesn't mean to do whatever we want, because if you're free from something, it also means you're enslaved to its opposite. And and being enslaved to righteousness is not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. yeah totally. um so as we uh, uh we get ready to head into this next week so just personally how are you handling this whole quarantine thing um you know i'm actually doing surprisingly okay i thought at the beginning i i was it was more anxiety as to what will happen um but you know kind of now that it's gone on i've gotten to a routine of waking up, starting my morning off with a Devo and prayer and exercise, and then just getting my schoolwork done. Then I have the rest of the day to kind of do whatever I want, whether that's, um, you know, take a social distance walk with friends or uh, make music, which is something I'm passionate about doing or watching TV. Um, So, yeah, I'm actually doing okay once I've got a routine. But when I was kind of without a routine, it was it was stressful for a little bit. Just yeah. 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 Just everything being Um, different. Yeah. So what's, what's one way um, or one thing maybe you're praying for right now that you find yourself just kind of drawn to, this is what I, I find myself praying for a lot. Um, I, I guess I'm praying a lot that this gets over with as quickly as possible um, because there's a lot of things to look forward to in summer, like Summerfest or Can of Cook mm-hmm. for me um, that like, I know always helped me grow in my faith and help others grow in their faith as well. Yeah. And so if this continues and into that and those end up getting canceled, that it will be, I mean, I'm sure I can still find ways to thrive without them, but you know, it's nice to have. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Hey, high school here, just to kind of summarize everything up. um, The idea behind today is just a, a, a deeper understanding of grace. Uh, grace doesn't make it okay for you to live just for you. No, grace frees you to experience the joy of living for one greater than you. So, Zach, thanks for joining us for HSM Devo, and um, we'll hopefully see you soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, I enjoyed this. All right, we'll see you. Thank you. Ooh.